What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos come in every week, you don't wanna miss them. Today, I'm going to talk about how to get published. If I were to decide to make a video on this topic here, I am by no means an expert. Not really even a big fan of research, but research is important to progress in medicine and doing different projects or looking at various aspects of medicine to make sure that we are given the best quality care to our patients. So you will have to do some research along your medical career, whether that's pre-med, medical, medical school, residency, and also as a um, attending staff physician. So it's important. But I just wanted to talk about some of the projects that I was on and how I got on those projects. Since I started residency, I have published I think five publications since I started residency, which is not a lot. There's people who publish 10 publications a year or you know, 20 publications in their residency. I'm just not that type of person. I'm not really big into it, but I think it isn't, like I said, I think it is important. So in med school, in my med school at Georgetown, there was a list that was going around that listed research projects, available research projects, and the, the professor's name, the title of the project, how many students they would need. And this email list was circulating around. So that's your first step or one potential step that you can look into at your particular school to see if there are any projects around. The next way is to email different physicians at your school. Doctors are busy. There's a lot of things going on. Data collection is very important. Reviewing, doing lit, lit search is very important. And unfortunately, doctors don't have time to, you know, sit there and do all of that, that particular work. So, like, with that being said, doctors are always looking for students to do some of the grunt work of the uh, project. On the plus side, you get your name on publication. So, email doctors in your hospital, at your med school, talk to the residents. They always have projects going on. Talk to the, the, the staff physicians, the program director, the chairman, and see which projects they need help with. So that's a great way to get involved. To go up to a resident or go up to a surgeon in the hospital and say, hey, I'm a medical student. I'm interested in doing some research. And if you ever need some help, here's my email address. You can contact me and I would love to help you. So that's exactly what I did. And I got on several projects in med school. One was, was basically, I was going into orthopedic surgery, but I actually did a family medicine research project. It's basically looking at different charts at this community family medicine center in Washington, DC, and looking at whether the, it's called the United States uh, Preventative Staff Forces recommendations to see whether the physicians were compliant to that. And it was basically going in and sitting at a computer and reviewing the charts and making sure the physicians were recommending, like for a patient who had high blood pressure, recommending weight loss, you know, uh, watching their sodium and blah, blah, blah. So out of that, I just did that in my off time in the med school, and I was able to go to Boston to present that research. So that's something that I used on my residency application, even though it wasn't orthopedic surgery. But I did some other research for general surgery, but you don't, it doesn't have to be in the particular field that you are going into. It can be, you can always relate it to your particular field that you, you're, you're interested in. So for that general surgery research, I kind of correlated that with orthopedic surgery and I said I did this research because I was interested in surgery and I didn't know what type. So you can always do that too. There's different types of research projects. There's case reports where basically there, if there's an interesting case or a patient or a condition that uh, you see in the hospital that is pretty rare or that a lot of people will possibly benefit from. It's called a case report. And I did several of those in my residency. One in particular was a lady who uh, was involved in a motor vehicle collision and she broke her femur. But in the process, she tore her sciatic nerve, which is pretty rare. So basically she had, we fixed her femur and then a plastic surgeon had to repair her nerve. But in the meantime, I collected all of the data from when she came in, her x-rays, and the rest of her story, and put it and wrote it up and submitted it to a journal and got accepted to that journal. So that's called a case report. 
Some other projects that I did was they're called quality improvement projects or QI projects. And these can look really good on your resume as well. I did several of these in residency. I would say maybe seven or eight of these. And basically I did one on hip replacements, trying to improve the, the flow of patients from the ER to the uh, operating room and then get them out of the hospital as quickly as possible. So just looking at different parameters and see where we can improve in the hospital to see what areas can be improved so the patients can get out quicker. And with that research project, I was able to meet with the CEO of the hospital. I was able to meet with the head of the nursing unit, all different types of really important people in the hospital just because of that project. Another other types of research are review research. Basically, you review a particular topic. And another article that I was published is for bisphosphonates and spine surgery. And bisphosphonates would give them to patients who have low bone quality to improve their bone. And basically, I wrote up an article or assisted in writing up an article about how these bisphosphonates can affect when we're trying to fuse a patient's spine. So that was an article that I uh, was able to get published as well. Another article that um, I submitted to a conference, and that's one thing that you can do to put on your application is when you present at different conferences. So if it doesn't get accepted to a journal, you can always look for conferences and submit your, your research, and then you may be able to go to that conference and present your research. So one that I presented to see if it will get accepted to the conference, and which I'm still pending to see um, the conference is coming up in about six months, is about the social media usage of different specialty residency programs. Random research kind of idea, but a medical student kind of came up with the idea and my program director reached out to me because he knew I was kind of big in the social media kind of world. So. It's a looking at different programs in residency, all different specialties, and say and looked at who uses their Twitter accounts the most. So, seems simple, but it was actually something that's really interesting. And they found out that the surgical specialties use the, their Twitter accounts the most. So, we submitted that to a conference for the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons, and we're still waiting to see kind of the outcome for that. The next article that I just recently got published and it was this month in the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery's journal is about disc herniations and there was a spine surgeon there is a spine surgeon that I worked with and he uh, came up with the idea about writing up an article about disc herniations and when you have a disc herniation you can either majority of the time get treated without surgery but there are certain patients who go to surgery for a disc herniation and they have a re herniation so I looked at different ways to reduce the incidence of re-herniations of your, um, your lumbar disc, also cervical and thoracic disc as well. So this involved kind of doing a lit review, which means looking at the literature that's out there using different search engines and compiling that all together and then kind of analyzing everything and putting it all together and synthesizing it and putting it into a, a paper. And we just got published with that uh, publication this month in the uh, American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery's uh, journal. Uh, the next project that I just got accepted to uh, to a journal as well is it's a device that we use in surgery to fix femur fractures. And basically what we did was we looked over the last four to five years and we looked at every patient that got fixed with this particular device. It's called an intermedullary now. And we looked at the failure rate and whether patients, they had a complication from this particular nail, whether the screw kind of came out, and we looked at their charts, we looked at x-rays, we looked at CAT scans, and with the help of medical students, it took us maybe about a year to compile all this data, and we put it together and we combined it with a, another group in, in Florida and compi compiled both of our um, data together, and we wrote it up into an article. And that just got accepted to another journal as well. So. Research is very important. It doesn't have to be in your particular field that you're going, in, going into. Say, for instance, you're going in dermatology. It doesn't have to be in dermatology per se, but it's helpful to be in dermatology. Whatever research you do in college, you can use that on your residency application. I didn't know that. Most important is to reach out to people and ask them, can I help you on a project? If there's ever a project that comes up, can I help you? 
So those are my tips for you know getting published and doing research. Like I said, it's very important. I would suggest that you do it, especially for the highly competitive specialties or if you're an IMG trying to get into a US residency, you have to have some type of research. So thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. We'll see you next time.